Testing. One, two, three. All right, Ron. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, good morning. The Lucas County Board of Elections is going to call their meeting to order on the 12th floor of One Government Center. Uh, today is Feb excuse me, March the 4th, and the time is 10.05 a.m. We'll have a roll call. Mr. DeGidio? Here. Mr. Irish? Here. Mr. Stainbrook? Here. And I, Mr. Rottenbiller, are present. Uh, items on our agenda today are for the special call meeting after attendance is the reorganization of the board for Directive 2013-21. I nominate Ron Rothbiller as temporary chair. I nominate John Irish for temporary chair. I second the nomination of John Irish as temporary chair. We'll have a roll call, Mr. DeGidio. Yes, for John Irish. I second it nominated. And he, said, um, he said yes for John Irish. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Mr. Stainbrook? No. And Mr. Rothmuller is a yes. John, you're the temporary chairman. Please take over as per the directive. As per the directive, step number two in the reorganization of the Lucas County Board of Elections is the appointment of a director. I will now accept nominations I nominate for the Megan position. Gallagher for the position of director of Lucas County Board of Elections. All right. Nomination for Megan Gallagher. Any other nominations? I nominate Gina Kazala. Nominations. Uh, any other nominations? All right. We have two nominations, that of... Uh, Megan Gallagher and Gina Kazala. I'll call the roll. Uh, discussion. I don't believe there's discussion on, well, on this there's matter. Well, discussion this time, John, because you don't run this. I'm reading this into the record. Gina Kazala does not possess the minimum qualifications to be a candidate for deputy director. Gina Kazala made multiple false statements against Megan Gallagher, and the board refused to review the evidence and discipline Gina for her false allegations. The board did not even present Gina Kazal as a candidate for director because the board did not follow this directive, 2012-23, by not completing Form 302A and Form 305. This is more evidence that the board is unable to follow the Secretary of State's instructions. I have absolutely no confidence in Gina Kazala and being capable of running this election for the primary in, on May. Gina has no management skills, no professional ability, and is incapable of telling the truth, and the voters of Lucas County deserve better. Gina cannot even do her job as Sarah, executive, as executive assistant this. director. She has not completed any meeting minutes for this year, and, and we got more than this. six months behind so in approving meeting minutes before her lack of work. So we can't even get the meeting minutes uh, from Gina Kazala. Right. Gina is more interested in socializing, ordering supplies, taking cigarette breaks, and she cannot complete her duties, and she's the secretary to the board. I have zero confidence in her ability as director, and she hasn't even completed her own responsibilities in preparing these board meeting minutes. She hasn't prepared board meeting minutes all year. There has been an investigation to whether Gina Kazala falsified statements against the director in order to get her job. She falsified two assault charges, which were never investigated, because three Democrat county missioner, commissioners are behind it. Gina is not trustworthy, cannot be trusted to conduct a fair and proper election, period. Dan cannot even show up for work and when he does, he's more are interested you about in done? carpet squares are going to be picked for at the early vote center, and I know this firsthand, in ordering magic markers, then making sure the voters have their ballots ready for the May election. And lastly, this is a travesty, and I have zero confidence that this board will be able to move forward with this May election. So I will say, before the vote's taken, this directive, which we're supposed to follow, the directive establishes minimum qualifications for directors and deputy directors of boards of elections and processes for county boards of elections to follow regardless whether the appointment is made in a full term, at a reorganization, or at a later date to fill an unexpired term. This is the directive. Part D, before being selected director or deputy director by a county board of elections, the candidate must complete Secretary of State's Form 302A, kept on file with the board of elections. This was not done. They have to pass the background check, and then to satisfaction of the majority of the board, as described below, a criminal background check by the county sheriff or other law enforcement agencies have to be done at the expense of the board of elections. 
this was not done. In addition, all candidates for deputy or director, regardless of whether the person is the current deputy director or director of the Board of Elections, must complete questionnaire form 305 before being appointed or reappointed to the position of director or deputy director. The completed questionnaire must be kept on file with the Board of Elections and a copy must be sent to the Secretary of State. This was not done. Application, Part B. Candidates for director or deputy director of the Board of Elections must submit a written application. None was done. A resume must be completed in Forms 302A and 305 prior to being considered, even considered by this board. And lastly, an advertisement. Where, where is the advertisement? We, we never had one. Advertisement applications for positions for deputy director must be placed in the blade or other print media, whereas there is a vacancy per, for provision of deputy director or director of the Board of Elections. The board shall advise the position for, or advertise the position for at least one week in the newspaper in the largest general circulation in the county uh, where the board is located. Uh, boards may also place the advertisement with national election trade publications such as the electioneeringcenter.org, which we've never done, and electionine.org. Go ahead, John. Okay. I'll call the roll uh, for we're now either voting for motion, my Megan, motion Gallagher, Megan Gallagher. Megan Gallagher or Gina Cazala were the two nominees. I'll call the roll. Mr. DeGidio? Yes, for Gina Cazala. Uh, Mr. Stainbrook? Uh, Megan Gallagher. Mr. Rothenbugler? Ms. Gina Cazala. And I, Mr. Irish, is Ms. Gina Cazala. And Kevin, did we do that correctly? Can we yeah. do that and we take a, we don't vote on my motion, we break it up and then some of you. Something in the statute that okay. authorizes the making sure. Done by nomination. Gotcha. Names are submitted, vote is counted. Okay. All right, the next step, uh, based on the directive we have in front of us, is the appointment of a deputy director. I'm now um, accepting nominations for deputy director. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask the name of Dan DeAngelis be put into nomination. Okay. Dan DeAngelis. Any other nominations? Once again, uh, Mr. DeAngelis, we're moving into a new headquarters for the Board of Elections uh, downtown here. And Mr. DeAngelis is more concerned about picking out the color of the carpet squares and ordering <coughs> magic markers than he is about making sure that we have ballots for this election. Um, it's very troubling to me, and the voters of Lucas County deserve way better than what we have right here now. All right, let me call the roll. Uh, the only name and nomination is Mr. DeAngelis. Uh, Mr. DeGidio? Yes, for Mr. DeAngelis. Mr. Stainbrook? No. Mr. Rothenbuehler? Yes. And I'm a yes for Mr. DeAngelis. The fourth step is appointment of a chairperson. Um, as you know, that the, the directive states that the chairperson has to be of the opposite party of the director. The director is Ms. Gazala, who's a Republican. So the only two candidates are Democrats, and I'm not interested in it. So I would like to nominate Mr. Rothenbuehler as the uh, reappointed as the director of the Board of Elections. I'll Chairman. second that. Chairman. Chairman. Yeah. Excuse me. Chairman. Um, I'll call the roll. Uh, Mr. DeGidio? Uh, yes, to appoint Ron Rothenbuehler as chairman. Uh, Mr. Sainbrook? Yes, for Ron. Uh, I guess you don't vote on yourself. I, John Irish, am a yes for Mr. Rothenbuehler, so you are the chairperson. And so I turn the meeting back to you. All right, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to make one thing clear here. I, I'm reading here that uh, in the directive I have from the Secretary of State, the Secretary of State does not perform background checks for directors and deputy directors if a Board of Elections determines it's necessary to conduct background checks prior to appointing directors or deputy directors and other election personnel. The Board should contact its sheriff. I just try to read these well, rules, but could I see that directive, Ron? Since we're here, I don't know what directive you're That's reading. The one I got, twenty-one thirteen twenty-one. Well, uh, this one came out after that, so it's actually more relevant. And this is, uh, you know, well, twenty-three. But go ahead. That's fine. 
This is the one that was sent to me in regard to the practice and, pro and the po policy in regard to what well, we just performed. As again, just more proof in the pudding that the deputy director and director don't even know the directive. And what, is the di what is the directive number in that? The directive number is 2012-23. And that yes. came after 2013-21? Correct. Oh, okay. Or before. 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 Yeah. So this this takes precedent. Yeah, see, on the correct directive, which is 2013-21, there are a lot of discrepancies with what Mr. Stanley of Red and the For example, these forms 302-A and 302-B specifically cannot even be provided to uh, the director, for example, until after that person is nominated. So, Stanbrook's complaining that she hasn't filled it out, but you can't give them out according to the current direction until that person's already nominated. Okay, I but believe. I'm not going to go through all the things he said in the part. If there should have been any discussion on these. The statute doesn't allow for it, and it's not appropriate. But I would move to adjourn the meeting. Please. Second. So the, the motion has been made and seconded, but I have just one comment to make. Uh, under the directive I did receive uh, based on the, uh, from the Secretary of State, it says before entering upon the duties of the Office of Newly Appointed Director and Deputy Director, the board employees uh, and board employees must subscribe to an oath. I do have the oath here, and I think while we're in an open session, uh, we should have the director and deputy director, and I'll read this oath to them, and then I have the forms to fill out right here. Okay? Please stand. Mr. DeAngelis and Ms. Reagan, you know, excuse me, Ms. Gina Gazala, do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Ohio Constitution, perform all the duties of your position to the best of your ability, enforce the election laws, and preserve all records and documents and other property pertaining to the conduct of elections that you are placed in your custody. I do. Therefore, you've been sworn in officially. Thank you. 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 Thank you.